Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. I'm trying to call around and see if I can like get a therapist. You've been really open about your childhood. Your father sure. passed away when you were young. You were homeless at 17. You lost your mother in October of 2021. So how did you find ways to cope with all that grief and being so young? It's uh, June 13th, 2004. Happy birthday, Alex. Are you excited, Alex? Say hi. Hi. My dad used to walk around with a camcorder all the time. And I, I don't know if it was because he was dying or if it was just because he purely enjoyed my adventurous self, but um, I was obsessed with the Naked Brothers Band. And all I wanted to do at that time was literally be half naked on a stage and sing. I like you today. Thank you, way to go, awesome. About 12 to 15, that was during my stages of finding out who I was. What are you gonna be doing today? I'm gonna be singing a song I wrote. What's it called? One Last I Love You. Okay, go ahead. It was morning, yeah. No, I lost to you. Oh, gosh. I just kept doing talent shows, hoping that someone would validate me. In reality, I really couldn't sing. I'm so sorry, guys. You're oh, good. You're fine. It's all right. Yeah, you're you fine. You sound really good. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's when I realized I had stage fright. I think over the years with my mom saying I couldn't sing and that I'd never be able to, it was something that I, that truly I started believing it. I started trying to train my own voice by the time I was 15 and 16. And if you scroll all the way down on my social media, all of my videos are me singing. Whoa, better than he can. Jealous of the way. I felt really discouraged. I felt like nothing was going to happen. And I stopped posting singing videos. I started doing comedy videos because I knew I had a, a knack for it. I knew I was good at it. Oh, <laughs> oh good. <laughs> I thought if I could get the social media thing big, then people would care about the music. And I think it worked. I've been gone from YouTube for a little while because I stopped enjoying the videos. I just didn't feel like me. I didn't feel like it was the real me. I never wanted to show my face in them. I never wanted to be a part of them. And, and that's just how it was. And I knew eventually when I went to videos all about me, that it had to be the real me. Nothing in this world I wouldn't do. When I came out with One More I Love You, that was the scariest thing I've done in my career. I just finished the music video and I'm gonna have a bunch of my friends react to it. You should be so proud of yourself. <laughs> if you have more talent in your pinky toe than maybe I do in my entire life. <laughs> you liked it? Yeah. That was the first time I fully put out something that was just me. I didn't see one hate comment. People genuinely enjoyed it. It was the first time I was vulnerable and I wasn't behind the camera and I was showing you the real me and and people, people listened. The music for me is therapy. Everything that I make is truthfully me. Everyone can relate to pain and it's something that I feel like no one really talks about. It feels like I'm screaming underwater You know what keeps me sinking to the bottom. There's another reason why I'm making this video. The music industry is fucking scary. Guys, I'm in New York right now. <laughs> in March, I had a bunch of labels reaching out to me to sign me. And I had said no for a year because I wanted leverage, but I also wanted to make sure I was ready. Now, why do I need a label now? I'm at the point in my career where I think the guidance, but also the things that they can offer me is exactly what I'm looking for. I'm only in New York for about six hours. I'm taking a few meetings and then I'm flying right back because I have the Bahamas to go to. March 13th is when I officially met Atlantic Records, uh, the ANR. His name was Jordan. I think I'm Axel Weber. This is probably the tiniest hotel room I've ever been in, but it's fucking cool. You walk in the door and here's my closet. Then here's my bathroom. This is where I shit. And then there's just my room. That's pretty much it. And then this is the view from the window. But you also might be asking, Alex, why are you in New York? And why are you only there for six hours? I'm in New York because a record label flew me out. If you guys know Headlights, I've been promoting that song heavily on TikTok and even on here in my last vlog. These days it's so dark and I can't get my head right. A record label saw it and they wanted to fly me out and meet me and potentially get a record label deal. As much as I value the timeline, JT, it's, it's something where it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna put out a record. I'm not 100% stoked that we fully made it perfect as it can be. Yeah. So if I need to push it a month, I, I will. I have loved every second of this conversation. <laughs> All right, man. You, me as well. Okay, so a few things. We might be going to Nashville this week to finish Headlights. But that being said, we might have to push the release date for the song as well. Everyone in my comments right now, no matter what I post is, where's Headlights? We want Headlights. And I'm out here like, I gotta fix Headlights. I gotta make it perfect because it has a hundred and something thousand pre-saves. And so it's like, I just want to do this right. 
You ready for greatness? Always. I gotta figure out what instruments sound the best on it. Windows up so high I can't breathe. That's it. I am extremely nervous to sign a record label deal. I have so much to prove. So much to prove. And I have to prove that I deserve in this space and I have to prove I'm just as good as half these people. And I'm working my ass off. And that is something that I am so scared of because I know that if I go 100% into this, I know I'm gonna make mistakes. And I don't have the luxury of making quiet mistakes. Ever feel like you're written up? That, that, I don't know how I'm still surviving. That would be sick. What do you think? I think it's sick. Yeah? Yeah. I've always played it safe. I've always been behind the camera. I always like, look at my friends, don't look at me. You know? Like, no one knows anything about me. What is it about Hell Lace that you love so much? Well, I mean, you remember like the first three I recorded was like about old me. Yes. But it was also like me trying to feel out like what I liked in music. And Headlights is the first song I've ever, I've ever actually like atoned to. Like it was like, this is about me now. Headlights is quite literally about anxiety and lack of control. And I have no control over anything in my life. And, or at least I didn't for a very long time. I feel like everyone fucking relates to that. This whole video is surrounded by the idea that this is how I got a record label deal. And in reality, this is how I became me. This is something that I've truthfully been working my entire life for, and I have never been happier in my entire life, besides meeting Cover, of course. Remember me happy. And we are on set for Alex Warren, Remember Me Happy, starring the man, the myth, the legend, Alex Warren. We just wrapped up a podcast, and I just got a call from my manager saying, congratulations, you've closed on terms. March 18th was my first meeting to join a record label. It's now June 12th. It's been three months, and we're finally on to the final step. When you're negotiating a record label deal, they give you the first 15 points of it. What you're getting paid, your royalty, blah, blah, blah. We finally agreed after three months of negotiating. So now they have to send us a 70-page contract that we have to go through, and it's pretty much just lawyer mumbo-jumbo. I'm ready to move forward, and so I told them that, but they're now doing things for me. I'm technically right now officially signed to Atlantic Records, which which is fucking insane. So cool. They told me I could sign a record label deal wherever I wanted. I could jump out of a plane with their lawyer. I could fly out to Bali and sign it in the middle of the ocean. I need the best place ever to sign a record label deal. And I think I found the perfect spot. Congratulations, you're now part of Atlantic Records. <laughs> nice. But in reality, that's not actually how it works at all. This isn't even a real contract. This is the B-movie script that I had my assistant put together. <laughs> all these months of negotiations about what my music is worth to someone, all summed up in one single page DocuSign that I ended up signing in the airport. So, we're in the airport in Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee, and I just got my record label contract. All I have to do, sign, sign, sign. I'm officially signed to Atlantic Records. How are you feeling? Established. <laughs> this is the moment where I have to prove the fact that I deserve to be here. I think that kind of goes full circle to like the reason why we filmed this video. And the videos to come of like the entire journey. And we're filming everything. It's genuinely to my parents. It's, it's to me. It's to me in five years. It's to me next year. It's for everyone. Even people watching this. Like, like I hope you're proud. You're an artist. Alex Warren went from being homeless to finding a massive following online. An artist named Alex Warren. Let's go fucking talk. So cool. Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice messaging system. I'm trying to call around and see if I can like get a therapist. So my problem is, it, and this is what I'm battling with, if I get a therapist, is my, is my music not going to be as good? If all my like depression is healed? <laughs> what are you going to write about? Yeah, what do I write about? <laughs> what? These days it's so dark that I can't see with headlights.